past few years, Southfield Lathrop has been stigmatized as a racially segregated place. But this is not true. Any student or faculty member would tell you the same. This past year, many current events have risen, and Southfield Lathrop students have been greatly affected. With the situation in the Persian Gulf, many students, including our Arab, Chaldean, and Jewish ones, were brought together and support was given. With the freeing of Nelson Mandela, Afro-American students joined together and spread the word to all of the other students in the school, creating a harmonious environment. For white students, it was the emergence of Vanilla Ice. Gata Gata, a white rapper on the black charts who brought a new perspective to music. Through all of these events, the student body has stood strong and stood as one. At this time, I would like to thank all the members of this year's Board of Education, the Superintendent's Administration, and Principal Mr. Smythe for always taking time out of their busy schedules to help me out. Finally, I would like to thank my parents for always giving me the best and for always sticking behind all of my endeavors. And without my mother's support, caring, and understanding, I never would have made it here today. Did I get it all right here, Ma? <laughs> to my fellow graduates, in getting this far, you have fulfilled your parents' dream. Now it's time to start fulfilling your own. I say go out and be yourself. Live your dreams and accomplish. Because even if you don't live, it'll be nice. Because if you shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll always be amongst the stars. And as my colleague and friend, the great and immortal two-time World Wrestling Federation Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, Greg the Hammer Valentine always says, knock him dead, baby. Southfield Lathrop is a school known for the acceptance of new ideas and praise for continuing traditions. Each year, the graduating class follows tradition in giving a gift to the school. Today, we, the class of 1991, will not only continue this tradition, but with it, start one of our own. It started as a simple idea, which we later decided to run up the flagpole. So on behalf of the graduating class of 1991, we'd like to present this flag as a token of our appreciation. We are We are giving back a little, a little piece of so much the school has given us. This flag will forever hang high for all future classes to see. As passers-by catch a glimpse of the flag, they will appreciate the excellence of not only Sophie Lathrop, but the excellence of the class of 1991. Thanks to the class gift from the class of 87, our freshman class had brand new picnic benches to eat our newly designed clothes lunch on. Now, after four years of never using them, and some of us never knowing they existed, we thought we had to give the class of 95 an even better gift. After racking our brains for hours, we couldn't come up with any ideas. Then thought what our biggest problem was these years, which was money. I can barely remember a board meeting our freshman or sophomore year when we had more than $50 in our account. Finally. Our junior year, we made some money hosting the annual homecoming, but realized we still didn't have enough money to survive. So we came up with and tried just about every money-making idea possible. We tried anything, bake sales, car washes, candy and raffle ticket sales, and some basic door-to-door -door begging. In simple terms, if there was a fundraiser, we tried it. The problem was, we always seemed to end up with about a 1% profit. So after three years of non-profit fundraise, we realized something. We're not real good at this. But Mr. Smythe taught us well, and we remained strong and didn't give up. When the, f when the smoke fi finally cleared, we realized we weren't as poor as we thought we were. And after all these years of exhausting fundraisers, we still have enough money left to present a generous gift to the class of 1995. So, on behalf of the 1991 seniors, we present this check in the amount of $250 to the 1995 seniors. <clears throat> wait, wait. Oh, you got more? <laughs> I 
I'm sure this money will give these soon-to-be freshmen an excellent foundation on which to build another prosperous senior class. Good luck, class of 1995. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put it right in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The class of 91 has been fortunate enough to have enjoyed three sponsors. At this time, we want to say something special to each of them for the hard work and guidance that they have provided. Mr. DiPolo, even though you never completed your mission with us, you spent three years planning a foundation in each of us to be aggressive and hardworking. This not only helped us raise money and place with our infamous floats, Pac-Man, The Charger Horse, and Hollywood Hills, but our qualities that we will all carry on forever. Thanks, Mr. DiPolo, for all the time, advice, and devotion that you provided. You won't be forgotten. We have this picture frame for you, but since you're not here, I'm going to give it to Mr. Smythe for you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. There's not a gift great enough in the world to say thanks for all the love, support, great ideas, and hard work she has given us. She has put in 110% and more to make our senior year the best year of our lives. We will miss her dearly. There's not a lady like her. We will miss her and her young personality. Mrs. Lychuk, here's a clock to keep in memory of the class of 91. This gift is presented to a class sponsor who came in and helped the board when we needed a class sponsor. She donated her time and gave us ideas to raise money for our class. Though at times we were out of order during our board meetings, she was still kind and patient. So on behalf of the class of 91 senior board, I would like to present this gift of recognition to one of our class sponsors, Ms. Margaret Moeller. Thanks for making our senior year a success and God bless you. Will everyone please rise for the singing of the alma mater written by Mark Kreischmann, class of 1970, Southfield Asia. <laughs> Four years ago, the class of 1991 entered Southfield Lathrop with only one thing in common, fear. We didn't know what to expect in the classroom or on the sports field, but most of all, we didn't know whether we survived our first trip down the hall. We were told by upperclassmen that 20% of the freshman class don't survive the first freshman Friday, that no freshman has returned from the trip through the Bermuda Triangle of SL, G-Wing. But as you can see, these rumors were blown out of proportion. Just as the Detroit Pistons began their march that ended in the championship glory, so did we begin our academic road, which ends here today. Those upperclassmen lied. Only 1% of the freshman class did not survive. The rest of us managed to take second place 
in the homecoming flow contest and raise enough money to take a trip to Cedar Point. Freshman year was also a year of firsts. Our first trip through school alone, where we ended up hopelessly lost. That was the first and last time we would ever search for a teacher. Anything, even being seen in the halls with faculty, was better than having to ask an upperclassman for directions. We experienced our first homecoming loss, which continued a long-standing tradition. We went to our first homecoming dance, saw our first SL theater production, and went to our first basketball game, complete with cheerleaders and pom-pom. And then there's the most infamous first. We were the first class not allowed to leave school for lunch. Most importantly, freshman year was when all of us came together to form the greatest class in SL history, the class of 1991. <laughs> With the help of our teachers, our, par our parents, and our own perseverance, we survived to face step number two, our sophomore year. The agony of being the youngest was over. We were now the big sophomores. We were no longer mute at pep rallies. We could paint 91 on our faces without embarrassment or harassment, and we overcame some of our past fears. This newfound spirit helped us to unite in creating the biggest and best float of that year's homecoming parade. When we say big, we mean big. I mean, how can you miss that humongous white horse coming slowly down 12 Mile on bicycle wheels? The theme was Americana, so we made a man, Paul Revere, to put on top of the horse. We were playing Athens, and our saying was, the Red, Ho Red Hawks are coming. But most of the people looked at our float and seemed to be saying, what in the world is coming? <laughs> Nevertheless, the hard work paid off, and we came in first place. We made many upperclassmen mad about our taking up first place, because usually it is tradition for the seniors to win. But one thing that did follow tradition was de the defeat of the Chargers at yet another homecoming game. Even though we lost, sophomore year was full of excitement. We were finally old enough to drive. No more endless rides to school on the dreaded cheese wagon, or even worse, being shuttled around by mo mommy and daddy. Though administration continued to enforce the closed lunch policy, with our newfound freedom, we were unstoppable. Well, except for those poor few who went to Evergreen for a pizza and came back with a detention. Now our weekends were spent driving around aimlessly with nowhere to go, and more often than not, we ended up at the infamous Ram's Horn. For chance there was a party, usually thrown by an upperclassman, we would waste half the night outside debating whether or not to go in. Then, after finally waiting, deciding to go up to the house, there was always the question of if they were really going to let us in. So, as many a night ended, we'd jump back into our cars and go back to where it was safe, Ram's Horn. Some issues came about during our sophomore year. The bad boys took the title as world champions, and we swore in a new president, not to mention our great VP, Quayle. One local issue that got a lot of heated discussion <laughs> was the burning of Southfield High. Not only did they get, longer, not only did they get a, w a longer winter break, but they did us a favor by getting us out early. Thanks, SH. <laughs> The year was rapidly coming to an end, and we realized that we needed to make major money in order to put on homecoming for our junior year. We sold farewellograms, had bake sales, advertised for our car wash that never was, sorry Mrs. Grit, and do not forget our infamous egg sale. Talk about door-to-door -door begging. <laughs> we were growing up slowly. <laughs> we were growing up slowly but surely. All of our energy was focused on becoming upperclassmen. Junior, Junior year, year, here, here we, we come. come. Okay. Our junior year was our best year yet. We now knew the building like the back of our hands, drove to school, and were finally allowed the freedom to leave campus for lunch, legally that is. This was the year that we, as juniors, put on homecoming. The dance was a huge success, unlike the football game. Our Hollywood-themed float came in third place, but at least we weren't and never have been last. Our junior princess was Lynette Ferguson. Without